Hi everybody, it's Sound Author, and a couple of months ago I promised you guys some tutorials, but I was at work on a Diva library, Third Eye for Diva, link below, um, and I learned some things, I discovered some things working in Diva, um, and since Diva is fresh in my mind, I just want to focus on Diva today. Uh, especially when talking about filter ping. Filter ping is basically when you ping a filter with some kind of brief burst of noise or some kind of DC off click or something, and you excite a filter that's on the brink of self-oscillation. Now, if you don't know about uh, self-oscillating filters, basically, uh, I'm just gonna go into the dual uh, VCO which is more or less a rough approximation of the Jupiter 8. Um, some copy. For this uh, tutorial, or at least right now, I'm going to use the byte high pass filter. Um, and I personally find that this pings beautifully. What, what I like about this is uh, sometimes when you ping a filter, you can get some pretty bright frequencies out of it. And because of that, I like to kind of run it through the low pass filter afterwards, just to warm things up if things get too bright. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, uh, where is it, key follow, and I'm going to turn that up to 64. That's going to fully key track this high pass filter. Okay. Now, before I get going, uh, I need to excite this filter with something. I'm gonna start out with a really brief method first. This is how I used to do things. The noise is over here on the first oscillator, as you can hear. Sometimes Diva can be really loud, so I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. Um, now, this is what I used to do. I used to just excite the filter with a brief snippet of noise. So I turn, as you can see, I turned the mix all the way over to two where there's nothing, nothing. Okay, and then I'm just going to take this, um, let's see, the amplitude filter is the, the first one. So I'm gonna turn everything down, attack zero, decay zero, sustain zero uh, for the second envelope. And I'm going to use envelope two to uh, slam uh, this oscillator mix over to oscillator one just for a brief second and that should give me a really brief snippet of noise okay all right that sounds okay maybe I turned it down a little too much all right so I've got a fully key track filter by uh, and 64 is what you want uh, and Let's just go ahead and turn this peak up. Resonance peak, it's the same thing, basically. And uh, let's just, I uh, can't remember. I think this one needs to be up pretty high. Oh, you can hear the low frequencies already. Okay, so that is that is a filter that is self-oscillating. The resonance is up so high that it's it's now an oscillator. Okay, if, if you don't key track it, it just stays put. Okay, that's pretty basic stuff. Y'all pretty pretty much already know that. It's about to get more interesting. Okay, so one of the first things that you're going to need to do, and I forgot to put this in here, you're going to need a tuner. Ableton has a wonderful, beautiful tuner. And I have already made some notes. Uh, you can see some notes that I made specifically for this filter. Uh, your center pitch, basically C, is going to be 30.14, 42, 14. You know, I kind of like uh, 66 point, let's go with 78.14. I did some research. <laughs> okay, so... Okay, and uh, if if you hit shift, if you hover over a knob, and you hit shift, and you use your and you use your mouse wheel, you can fine tune. As you can see, you can get you can get it right down to the decimal pretty easily. 
and you can see that get, that's given me a C. Now here's the thing with uh, a, w different filters ping differently. They self oscillate a bit differently. The resonance works a bit differently in, in almost every filter you can shake a stick at. Uh, I've noticed that with this high pass filter, uh, when you have more resonance, the pitch actually, when you're, when you're self oscillating, when you have more resonance, it tends to go flat. And when you have less resonance, it tends to go sharp. It's quite strange. And as you can see, we're a little bit flat. So I'm gonna hit shift again. And I think I even in my notes, I even have 86.86 is where I like to ping it. So as you can see, the, the filter is self oscillating, but it's, it's, it's constant, it's steady. We're gonna get it to the point where it's almost there, but it's not, it's not, there's no sustain. So 86.86 is kind of where I like it, as you can kind of already hear it dying out. Okay. But it's still, it's still there. You can even go, you can go more sometimes. Okay. So I don't usually do this with the noise. I usually do this in another method I'm gonna show you. Okay, so you hear that? That's filter ping. And that's the old method that I used to use with the noise. And it sounds fine, but there's another method that I like to use. And we're gonna start over from scratch. I'm gonna use the same one, dual VCO, but instead of a brief snippet of noise, I'm gonna use something that I discovered. I'm gonna use a pulse wave. This was a discovery that I made when I was playing around with filter ping. And uh, I think I had a pulse wave on the second oscillator and I was doing some the noise thing that we just did. But I had turned the, the pulse width on the pulse wave. Oh, it's a, it's a bit loud again. Diva is a loud synth, yo. Okay. I turned the pulse width all the way up until I get that. that if you can hear that, that DC offset click. Um, where's the analyzer? Where's the spectral? Where's the... Let's give, a, give me the spectrum. Okay, as you can see right there, you can see all of those low frequencies lighting up. And this is why I prefer this method. There's more low frequencies and it's not so harsh and bright. Okay, and I noticed this is very specific to D.Va because last night I tried to do this in Repro and it kind of does it, but this dual VCO is really good about giving you this DC off, offset click when you have uh, the pulse wave turned really up all the way. When you turn it down all the way, you notice it doesn't close all the way? I don't know why. It has to be up, not down. And then you get that DC offset click. This excites the filter beautifully. So we're just gonna go into our, uh, and see this way we don't have to play around with an envelope on the oscillator mix or anything. It's just, just does what you need it to do. It just gives you a nice big click. So, Gonna go back into the byte high pass, key follow, 64. And we're gonna go to, what is that, 78.14, I believe it is. 78.14. And 86.86. Okay. And this should ping rather nicely. It's even a little bit too much ping, so I'm gonna turn the Okay. And that doesn't sound like much, but you know, when you start to run it through some, all right, that's filter ping. And I prefer to do it with that narrow pulse wave that's just completely closed down. It doesn't always work on every synth. It works really well in the DCO and Diva, okay, or the, the dual VCO, sorry. I'm gonna show you some more stuff. Okay, so I do that on tons and tons of patches. I first really started to get into it on, on Zebra. 
Uh, I did some of it with Hive, did lots of it in Equinox and even more of it uh, on Diva. I did tons of filter ping on Third Eye, a very pingy library. Um, but it's this is just the tip of the iceberg. You can now, you can do something that I like to call stack index modulation, at least in Diva. Sorry, I have to adjust my, my seat here. Um, this is where it starts to get really cool. So you've got this, this pinging filter. Let's take that reverb off. It's a bit distracting right now. So there's this modulation uh, source uh, in, uh, I'm gonna go, go over to the ad here. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do here. There's this modulation source called stack index. What is stack index? Stack index is basically all of these six stack voices. You have up to six and you can tune them. Usually they're used for unison or they're used to make chords. You know, you can have a minor third and a perfect fifth and a flat seventh or whatever. You can make nice big lush chords. That's usually what it's used for. But you can take the stack index and you can use it as a modulation source. What I'm gonna do, if I remember correctly, in my byte uh, high pass notes, there's a trick that you can do. And that's not it, that's not it. Adding key follow to the voice map uh, modulator. And um, there's a trick that you can do. You can now uh, ping this with, let's say you want the, let's see, let's say that you want the whole thing Okay, six stack voices are now on. That means this is gonna be pretty loud. Okay, that sounds like one thing, but this is, this is gonna get more interesting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the stack index and I'm going to take the voice map modulator. I'll explain this in a minute. I'm gonna take the stack index and I'm gonna take the voice map modulator and I'm going to, instead of the key follow, just going directly to uh, modulating the filter, I'm going to now use this add circuit. This is when you start to really get into the modifiers down here in the modifications tab. Okay, and so I'm basically I have the key follow. It's going is, is going out. Okay, that's fine, but I'm going to add something to it. I am basically going to take. Uh, I don't know why that says rectify. Sorry for the confusion. That's stack index. Okay, so I'm gonna take that stack index. I have six voices, and I'm going to scale that by, with the voice map modulator. And the voice map modulator, to, to avoid some confusion, the voice map modulator is a per voice modulation source. Since we have six stack voices, as you can see, six voices are lighting up all at once, okay? And I believe if I go mono, So yeah, you can see those lights are all lighting up at once. Usually, if this was just one stack voice, oh, I'm in mono, so I need to be in poly. Got to be in poly to, to do to do the other thing. You can see it's just it's a sequencer when it's in poly. With when it's polyphonic, the voice map modulator is a sequencer, and it's just and it. But there's some voice allocation going on here. So if you play chords then all of a sudden it's all over the place now, okay? And that's that's because it's remembering the number of voices. Okay, but that's a voice allocation thing. Um, we're not gonna use it that way. That's how it usually works. But what we're gonna do is, you can be poly, in poly or mono for this, but I'm just gonna be in mono just for good measure. So, so you have all of those six stack voices lighting up all at once. And as you can see, these you have these knobs, and these knobs uh, will allow you to use each voice as a modulation source with each of these knobs. So you could get really weird with this, and you can use it for all different kinds of things. So basically, I'm multiplying the stack index by the voice map. Well, all of these are all of these voice map modulation knobs. They're all a zero. 
So it's, so the so the stack index is being multiplied by zero. So nothing's nothing's really coming out. I have to turn the knobs up in order for something to happen, but I have to turn them all up. It gets a little tedious. Um, I wish there was like a, a latch control so you could just latch them all and just turn them all up at the same time and have them all up at the same value. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to add this multiplication to the key follow now. And it's still going to be the same because remember all those knobs are at zero. So it's still fine, but it's going to get, it's going to get interesting. Um, for the time being, we're going to forget about proper pitch and I'm just going to turn this up a little bit. And here's the thing, stack index is bipolar. So when I modulate the high pass filter cutoff with uh, this, with what's coming out of add, it's going to have three voices go down and three voices are gonna go up, okay? And it's gonna sound really weird at first because I have to turn all of these up to the same value, okay? But you have the key follow going through and then you have the stack index being multiplied by the voice map modulator. And what's coming out of this multiply circuit here is being added to the key follow, okay? This is about to get interesting. As I start turning up each of these knobs, you'll hear what I'm talking about. Let's go uh, with, I can't remember if I put this in my note here. Um, let's see, uh, voice modulator knob for a major pentatonic. I think I have a level. Yeah, I'm not gonna concern myself with it. I, I, I wrote the notes down uh, somewhere, but I forgot. I forgot where I put that information. Okay, we're not even going to concern ourselves with proper pitch. I'm just going to show you the general, uh, the general idea. Let's go with 20. Let's go with 20. Okay, so three voices are going to go up, and three voices are going to go down. And this is not going to sound real musical right now because I didn't I didn't tune tune it properly, but you can. And there's like a, it's like a 15.64, it's a some decimation. Okay, hear that? All right. Now, because we've added this to the key, the key follow, it's key tracking it, which is nice. If we, if we didn't do that, if you take the key follow away, uh, if you take the key follow away, it's just the same thing over and over again. That's why it's so important to add the key follow to it. See, the reason the reason that I multiplied it by the voice map modulator is because if you don't and you just put the stack index in there, it's all over the place. Because remember, this uh, modulation of the, of the high pass filter cutoff is turned up to 64 because of the key follow. You want the key follow. So basically, you're turning down the amount of the stack index because you've got that key follow up at 64. Okay, so we're gonna go back to multiply stack index. I just did that to show you what happens when you don't do that. Okay. And you can still adjust the level. Another thing that you can do and this is an important thing to, to uh, note. I'm just going to go to the analog style filters because it's just a bit more simple. You can turn the, the, the release up. Okay. Did you hear what just happened? All right. You hit the note, you heard the ping, and then you hit another note after it, and then all of a sudden it died. Why? Well, it has to do with voices. Because because you've got stick six, um, you got six stack voices up in the air. When if you, so, if you release the note too much, then because you're basically using the filter as an oscillator. So if you fil if you turn the release up too much, you lose your ping. It goes away. Okay. So you can get away with you can get away with a very little amount. But you can't, you can't get away with a lot of it. Okay. And this is why I use uh, ping a lot of the times I use ping with an ARP. 
Okay, so here's another issue that happens. Um, remember when I said the patch is mono? Here's the thing: we're using six. Uh, we're using six stack voices, but the synth itself is uh, it's set to only have eight voices active. And the reason, and that is why you're getting this. That's why you're getting this wonderful ping, and then all of a sudden, boom, 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 plunk, 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 because you're you're voice stealing, you're losing your voices. And so, in, so to fix this situation with the ARP, in this situation, it's a very specific kind of a situation. We're gonna make it poly, and to avoid, go back in the trimmer section, and to avoid. Uh, that plunk, plunk, plunk thing with the ARP, you're going to have 12 voices, okay? However, there's going to be another problem that comes up here. <laughs> now we have to turn these other, we have to turn these other uh, voice map modulator knobs up. Okay. Okay, so now, so now, okay. So now you can play chords. Now, you see what I just did with the uh, with the mix. Um, let's let's have one of these at like three. Yeah. This is a bit more interesting. So anyways, did you see what I did with the oscillator mix? Since I have nothing on the first oscillator, um, sometimes uh, filters ping differently depending on uh, the, the way that you drive them. And so I'm actually turning down the input of the filter uh, when I'm turning it over to oscillator 2 because there's nothing on oscillator 2. So I'm essentially turning down the level of this DC offset click. And when you turn down the level of the filter input, when you're, when you're using filter ping, the filter kind of takes over. And when the filter takes over, uh, a lot of the times, sometimes that causes your resonance to ring out more. Sometimes it causes your resonance to ring out less. It depends on the filter itself. These filters always ping, they ping differently. But let's get it to the point where it's barely giving us anything. Right. Yeah. Okay, now let's get creative. Uh, let's take uh, random hold LFO is basically sample and hold. It's the same kind of thing. And let's have this be at uh, one eighth notes. And uh, let's leave it uh, bipolar. And now let's use that LFO2 to modulate the uh, the amount of the resonance. But, if, but since it's bipolar, let's find a nice middle point with the resonance first. I think that's pretty good right there. And let's very carefully Turn the level of that resonance up, but be very, 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 very careful. Pre hover over the knob, press shift, and just very carefully fine tune it. Ah, I made a mistake. You can't re you can't uh, modulate the resonance of the byte high pass. You can only modulate the resonance of this filter over here. I made it, I forgot. I forgot. But it does get really interesting when you do that. So let's turn this back up. And it, and because of course I didn't remember we didn't concern ourselves with pitch. There's a there's a specific there's a specific pitch, but I can't remember. I did I, I do have some notes here for but these aren't the correct notes. Those are not the correct notes. There's some other notes that I took.
for the bite high pass filter. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is another trick that I'll show you. That is a quantizer tutorial that I will show you. Okay. But remember when I told you to, uh, let's just use a cascade filter, uh, that the beauty of this is that you can run it through the low pass filter afterwards. So you can color it in a nice way. Okay, but like I said, this can get more musical if you uh, went through the voice map modulator and you and and there is I'll put it in the link below there is a value with six voices that you can use that will make sure uh, that all of these are basically that all of these here okay that all of these peaks all of these bands basically there's a separate filter bands now uh, it's it's very similar uh, to uh, parallel bandpass filtering, which is very similar to a vocoder. That's why in my third eye demo, when I started playing a patch, I was like, it sounds very vocodery. Um, a vocoder is quite literally a very complex series of parallel bandpass filters. All of these, all of these are now independent bands. They're independent, basically bandpass filters now. Okay, even even though. That is not the topology of the filter itself. That's kind of end, ends up, that's what it ends up being because you're using the six separate stack voices independently uh, to modulate the filter. Uh, but you have to tune them right. And you have to think about the number of, of voices. Uh, for example, uh, if I was to go ahead and use this same technique, uh, to modulate the low pass filter instead, let's go with the cascade because the cascade filter pings beautifully. It sounds very glassy. Uh, and I already have key follow here, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, so now I can just use four stack voices and let's just go with three uh, voices overall and let's turn it down a bit. And uh, then let's go with the, yeah, four voices. And let's tune that to like 76, I believe that's where C is. And yeah, that's where C is. And so now let's take our stack index on the low pass filter. See, you could, you could, you could use stack index to modulate, not just filter settings, but you can do some wave shaping with it. Oh, that's another tutorial. Okay, it's just the things that you can do with stack index modulation is just great. Okay, so I have four stack voices. And let's say that I want all of them to be octaves. Octave, 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 octave. So I'll have four octaves, obviously 12 times, uh, 12 times two is 24. Uh, and the reason that I'm concerning myself with two is because remember this is a bipolar modulation source. So two voices are gonna go down and two voices are gonna go up. Okay, so that means that you have 20, you have 24. This is where it gets really confusing. You have 24 and then, but your but since you have four voices, your middle point is gonna be right in between two and three. And it's because of that middle point, it needs to be uh, half of an octave because you're gonna have an octave up and then an octave down. So the middle point has to be in between those two octaves, which means that your stack voice has to be 30 because that's 24 plus six. Okay, now that is not C. And remember, since, well, remember I was talking about that middle point, now you have to compensate. I believe it's, there it is.
Am I too high or too low? Can't remember. Should be... It should be... Oh, let's get rid of that. Uh, what, 76? Uh, 7, 8, 9, 80, 81, 82. Should be 82. I'm using four. Did I get it right? C. 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 Is that a C? No, it's not. G. E. I didn't do it right. What's going on? What is going on? Got four stack voices. Should have prepared my notes a little bit better before I did this. But you can, but but using that method, you could get all of these to be octaves. But let's say, now I believe, yeah, you get the same thing happening with the note release. So yet again, if you have too much release, it starts to kill your ping. Okay, so obviously I did not tune this right, um, uh, but you can get it to where they're all octaves. And usually when you get it to, to where they're all octaves, and then you wanna make chords, you can... Oh, I only have four voices, okay. All right, so you can get weird with it. Um, so you can you can make chords, you can get really music. I'm just showing you the basic idea here, okay? So I I made a lot of really beautiful atmospheres. I made one uh, preset specifically for Third Eye um, called Muted Embira, which uses exactly that method. where I am using the multiply circuit that is quantizing. Ah, that's what I didn't do. But did I really need to quantize the stack index? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I did. I don't really think I need to quantize the stack index. I think I just did it wrong. Anyways, uh, so that is when you use filter ping in tandem with stack index modulation. And it, with this one, I don't believe I had to use the voice map modulator to multiply the stack index. I did something with the alternate mod source. Okay. So I know that for some of you watching, this could still be kind of confusing. Like maybe some of the things that I tried didn't work so well because it's it's been a minute since I programmed those patches. But um, a lot of these patches use... Filter ping. Especially that one. That, uh, that byte high pass filter, I think is the most CPU intensive thing in all of D.Va. Uh, which is fine for mono patches, but when you, when you start using it with poly patches, it can start getting pretty intense. That's the basic concept with filter ping, uh, using a signal to excite uh, the filter in a musical way or in an atonal way. I'm gonna show you one more thing here and it's very useful with filter ping. Uh, and I'm gonna use the d d dual VCO again because it has cross modulation. So what I'm gonna do on oscillator two is I'm going to have that pulse width. Well, it's very loud. Okay, and 
Uh, I'm going to send that to us. You can have pulse. You can have pulse with modulation either on just oscillator one, or you can have it for both oscillators. Okay. So I found I find that at 99.75 is when it closes finally. Okay. And so I have this t narrow, tiny little pulse wave, and I, I'm just going to leave it open just a little bit. Okay, and on the scope, you can see that's just a tiny little, it's just a little, tiny little thing. And I'm going to use white noise to cross modulate the frequency, to, to modulate the frequency of that pulse wave. And it's going to go all over the place so fast at audio rate that it's going to become basically vinyl crackle. Okay, if you don't want it to be so loud, you can increase the level of the pulse width modulation or the just narrow the pulse width. Okay, so you have sort of a vinyl crackle thing happening, which is how I got a lot of those textures uh, for Third Eye. Okay, and so this comes in really handy um, when you are doing filter pink because this, this modulates uh, a pinging filter beautifully. 64. Okay, so let's just go with uh, Here's a, here's a little uh, reverb trick that I f found out. Obviously, you have your uh, big diffuse reverb. If you turn the diffusion all the way down, you'll hear all of the little delays. There's no diffusion. For this kind of sound, it kind of works. You can turn your dampening all the way down, but it gets a little harsh. So it just sounds like a sea of marbles now, right? That's a little too much. You're gonna want some dampening. And you don't need much of it. Okay, but if you take something like that, you take all of that, ref all of those reflections and then delay the crap out of it. So I kind of like 3.33, five and 6.66 for center left and right because they're all spaced apart evenly and they, they sound kind of like a reverb and it's very nice. So 6.67 actually. Uh, and I have my, let's turn the dry down a little bit because we're going to create this big, huge atmosphere with this. And let's turn the center volume. I like the side volume to be a little bit louder. Um, turn that high pass filter up just a little bit. And I like to turn the low pass filter almost down near 50 because I like to really crank the feedback. And when you have a lot of feedback, you don't want too many high frequencies getting through. Turn that, well, that wow level up a little bit. And if that crackle sound is a little bit too much, you can turn it down a bit. Lots of feedback. Obviously, that's too much feedback. But you get the general idea. You can use filter ping uh, in all kinds of really super creative ways. Uh, we've just scratched the surface of stack index modulation and using the voice map modulator. 
to use the voice map modulator in really creative ways. I got really creative on Diva and I did some things that I didn't even dream that I would be doing in a virtual analog synth. So yeah, it gets really super cool in Diva. So I'm just gonna focus these tutorials on Diva for the moment because it's really fresh in my mind. But I hope you got something out of this uh, because we're gonna go even deeper with this. And then we're gonna get to Batsala and we're gonna get to Zebra and we're gonna just really explore on this tutorial series. So I really hope you got something out of this. Uh, stay tuned next time. Goodbye.